Right. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the spine for the quadruped. So by now you guys should have finished your legs. Uh, in a moment we'll take a look at where how oh, how far I took my legs. Um, you should by by now by then be at the same same place as I am. Uh, if you want to just quickly go onto the spine, you can definitely just wait with the legs but I suggest that you finish one module at the time so you don't forget it and it's good to do like you know four legs even though it can seem quite repetitive you will under start to understand the process but anyways here goes for the spine so the first thing we're gonna do for the spine is that we'll start out by setting up the joints we're gonna talk a little bit about placement fast and then we're gonna talk about orientation uh, and after that we're gonna move on to do our IK spline we're not going to do a whole lot of FK. We're going to have one FK control or maybe two FK controls for our spline. Uh, maybe one at the hips and then one in the middle of our character to, that it can pivot around. Uh, and the last thing we're going to do uh, is uh, make the controllers for these things, for the, uh, for the spline. So once again, just like the legs, I'm going to divide it into uh, two different uh, lectures. One where we're dealing with the relatively simple stuff and then we're going to move on to part two which is going to deal with a little bit more of the in-depth and advanced topics uh, so now uh, here we go and let's say we just move in and talk about part two so the first thing we're going to do is set up our advanced twist controls for our spline this uh, ensures that our spline won't flip when we're moving it around uh, which can happen quite a lot with uh, with splines, so we're gonna try and set up a system that can prevent that. Uh, then after that, we're gonna do a stretchy. We're gonna add some stretchy stuff. Oh, let's try and close it down. Uh, we're gonna try and do some stretchy stuff for our spine. Um, and once we have the stretchy spine in place, we're gonna do um, a squash uh, volume. So when the animal's spine gets closer, or the the rib cage gets closer to the to the pelvis volume will push out so the stomach becomes reactive to if it gets stretched out it'll get thinner I and mean, if it gets closer it'll get thicker just if you were stepping on a ball but that's basically the topics we're going to cover for the whole spine and I hope you guys have fun okay welcome back so right now you can see uh, that I've taken the leg that we had before and replicated it around. So I got it for both uh, front leg and hind legs now. And uh, we're going to slowly move on to... So some of you will have had some errors with your front legs and I hope you sorted that out. If not, then try and ask uh, in the comments and see if anybody can help you out, else I'm going to be available to, to try and answer. Um, but right now we're going to focus on the spine. Uh, which is the next part of the module. So if you've gotten this far, then uh, congratulations, you you made it into you made it into the next part. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do is just uh, group all these legs here, and I'm just going to call them leg group just for now, so we have some sort of order to it. Okay. So now I'm going to go into the side view. On oh, the way, and I do that so fast is I hold down space, I hold down middle mouse mouse button while I'm clicking on the Maya in the middle here. Uh, you can do it with whatever button apparently. I've always used middle mouse. So it goes to side view. This is where you can change to perspective view, side view, front view, top view, whatever you want. Uh, and as you can see here, if you're if you're once again your character looks a little bit funny here, just make sure that you select that front view and then just translate it. Let's try and see here. Let's translate it out. So now if I go in my sorry, my front view, my camera has now been moved out. So I'm looking horizontally. But if my camera is inside my character, obviously, oh, if my camera is inside my character, obviously I can't see anything. Anyways, let's move on. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to say skeleton, joint, and what I usually do with my spine, specifically when a character is as straight as this guy, I try to keep my spine chain completely straight. So let's just zoom in here. I'm going to hold down X, so I snap to the grid. I'm just going to put that in with like two spaces in between. So we're going to change that distance uh, in, a, in a moment. So let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, five. Yeah, that'll, that'll be fine. So I'm going to select all these, and right now you can see they're all good, except that the last one is not oriented correctly. Uh, so let's try and just quickly fix that. 
So we know how to orient joints now, but I'm going to show you like another way to see the orientation of these joints. So you can see here, uh, if I go in, and I can see that they're all the same, and if I say skeleton, orient joint, uh, so let's say set, and let's put that in the minus x, just like we did in the previous video. They're all oriented now, but obviously a joint is always oriented for the next part of the chain, so this is easy for them, but obviously for the last one, there's nothing to aim for, so it doesn't know where to go. So I'm just going to tell it, take the orient of the world, which is the world of this object is this one. So if I hit there, you can see that it jumps back. But quickly, just to mention that, if I go back now, and you can see that that jumps here, you can see that this joint is actually different. And why is it different? It has a value here, and it actually has a, it has a value in the joint orientation. Uh, and the other joints don't. So if I just take that and zero that out, it's going to look exactly like its parent. And that's another way to like get your joints to fit to the previous joint. So that's how you inherit. This is actually where all the all the rotation on all joints go. So if I rotate this joint now, you can see if I rotate this one up minus uh, 42 degrees, and I say modify freeze. Let's try and freeze the rotation only. You can see the 42 ends up here. So the rotation actually never disappears. Not in this moment at least. So, but let's try and undo that just so we're sure that everything is the same. Alright, so all my joints are oriented correctly. I'm going to go into the side view. And let's try and just select all these guys. So I'm not going to select the, the first one because I don't want to move it. But I want to move these. So if we go down and try and place this now. I'm just going to select all of them. Go into my radius here. Let's give it, let's say, 10. Get some good distance on them. They might look a little bit funky now. So I'm selecting everything except for the, la for the first. I'm going to move that down into the character. So I know that I snapped it to the grid, so I know that they're in the middle. So what I want to do now, I want to make sure that my joint is in the middle of my two... Well... We can have our joint start in the middle of, of our control. That means that when we're rotating our spine, our legs will actually stand still if I'm rotating back and forward. Like if I rotate the spine this way, uh, the legs will stand still. But um, and the way I'm going to do that is just by holding down V. So I'm moving back and forth, and then I'm making sure that it snaps to that point. And up and down, snap to that point. And then I'm going to select all these make them fit go something like this and right now I'm thinking I can have a controller something like that let's try and do do that that should be all right we're gonna have our neck a little bit high here I'm tempted to right now to just see if I should do put it somewhere something like that but I think I think we'll be all right here I mean yeah it's a fairly simple character so I'm not gonna spend too much time fiddling since this is about the rigging part so let's just try and go with this quickly rename these so let's call that M spine AJ J and T so M for middle just gonna duplicate that down as I said before normally I don't really spend too much time sorry spending too much time naming stuff unless I use a script but because we're trying to understand what's going on we're doing everything manually, so A, B, C, D, E. Damn, it's hard to talk and type at the same time. Let's call this end. And then I'm... Um, I'm actually going to go in here and I'm going to say search and replace under modify. So modify, search and replace. I'm going to just search for JNT and say, let's go IK, JNT, so we know that this is our IK chain. So the next thing I'm going to do, just to make sure that I have the orientation of the joints, I'm just going to duplicate the chain. I'm going to forget about that now. We might not use it, but maybe we will. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Skeleton. I'm going to go IK Handle Tool. I'm going to go for the spline this time. And we'll see in a moment what the spline is. So a number of spans, let's put that to three. That's the amount of divisions we're going to get in our curve. So if we have less than four joints, our curve can actually not be created. So make sure that if you have more than four joints, you can go for three degree curve and if you have less then you gotta go for a less degree. It, it's all about how flexible you want your joint chain. So I'm gonna click this part and I'm gonna click this part. Sorry, I gotta correct my headset. So what it's gonna give me is a curve and I'm just quickly gonna hide my geometry here. 
so you can see what's going on. So it's going to give me this curve here. And if I go to component mode and I start moving this one around, you can see my join chain is now following it completely, which is great. So I'm just going to go back and leave that here. So I'm going to call that spine, m spine, spline, ik spring, oh, ik. Um, sorry, no, I lost it. IK spline. And then just to rename everything, we're gonna call this IK spline CRV for curve. Great. So the next thing we're gonna do is take this one chain that we duplicated. We're gonna duplicate it one more time. So what do I want now? I just want the last joint and I want the first joint. So let's try and kill this and go spine AJA IK driver. And let's call this one for B driver. Let's unhide these and make them a little bit bigger. Like, like so. So now I'm going to select these two guys. I'm going to select my curve that I got from it. By the way, if your curve doesn't appear, then try and go into the spline solver. If I go here and say IK spline. If your curve doesn't appear, make sure you have auto create curve on. Or you can reset the tool. It should be on for standard. Uh, so you should get the curve. So now we have these two joints and I'm going to take this one, uh, this spline, and I'm going to skin it. So you don't need any, you just need the regular reset the setting. You don't need the join hierarchy, only the join selected. Well, you don't, in this case, it doesn't matter, but for now, for other times. So bind skin, and now when I move this around, I, I'm actually starting to have something of a spine. Okay, so that's great. So the next thing we're going to do is we need a controller. And because I, I'm a little bit lazy, so I don't want to spend my time creating a new controller. So I'm just going to take the controller from the foot and I'm just going to duplicate the orient of that. And then I'm going to unparent it. And I'm just going to delete everything we don't need. So I just want the controller in this hierarchy. So I'm just going to kill all that stuff and then just move the controller up here. I'm going to take the name from my IK driver. And I'm going to rename that to be control. And then we're going to do exactly like we did before. I'm going to take that and put that in here. So now these guys are called ah, I messed up the names there. So let's call this one an orient. So now we have an orient group, a modified group for my controller. They're all in the same space. And I make sure now... I want to make sure that all my controllers are oriented the same. So even when I'm rotating this one forward, it should be an X. If this one's rotated forward, it should be an X. So everything is sort of like rotated the same. It's not necessarily like super important for the feet and and then, and the sp and the spine to be the same, but at least like all your middle controllers, so the spine, the neck, the tail, should all have the same rotations. Else your animators are going to go crazy. Uh, so even though I'm going to keep this position, I still want to change the look of my controller, so I'm just going to go in there. So if I hold down J while I'm rotating, I'm snap rotating without having to change anything. So you can see like if I hold down J, I get this one, so J. Uh, so I'm just changing, changing the shape here. And now I kind of want to just be able to see my character, but I'm still going to go into x-ray mode. So if I select that, oh sorry, I'm in component, so if I select that here. So just by right-clicking and going to object mode, I went into object mode. So I'm selecting my controller, going into component mode again, make that a little bit bigger, just so we now have just something. I mean, it, it's not going to be super pretty right now. I'll make it prettier, but I don't want to spend too much of you guys' time just showing you how to make a curve, because we already know that by now. So let's just try and get that up here somewhere. Something like that. In the only thing I'm thinking when I'm creating my curves is that they can kind of be reached from, like if the animator is animating from down here, or if they're animating from some specific pose, I don't want them to change their camera angle in order to grab a controller. Not if I can help it at least. So next thing, we talked about that before, let's color correct this one quickly. Let's go and make that green. I usually go with green for my IK controllers on the middle. And I'm going to duplicate that. And I'm just going to select the first one. I'm going to say modify, change names. And I just want to be able to say 
uh, spine AJA. Let's call that AJA and change that with AJB. Great, so now this one is called B, and we're going to move that up to. the front of the character. So here we go. And that's gonna be our that's our front, okay. So the next thing I'm gonna do now is just constrain these controllers. So if I select the controller and then the driver and say constrain, parent constrain, I'm going to do the same thing with the A. And there you have it. So that's actually all I, well actually we need one more controller, so if I just duplicate this one and then I'm going to rename all of these, so I'm going to call that M spine pivot control. Let's call this M spine. The reason why I'm giving all these modify and offset groups is because I might want to like add some attributes to them later. So pivot control modify group. Let's check that name. Orange group. So the next thing I want to do, last thing I want to do is this orange group is I just want to change like a pivot point for my character. And I usually just want to have that right smack in the middle of the character so we can actually just turn the whole thing whenever we want to. So it doesn't need to like be on top of any joints or anything, but it's going to be ruling as an FK controller over our other controller. So I'm just going to go in and switch things up a little bit here. Like that, like that, like that. Something easy like this. That should be fine. And then we're gonna just going to color correct this yellow. I might change that shape later because I that's that's hauntingly ugly. Oh, where's my yellow? Oh, there it was. Sorry. <laughs> okay, and last thing, I'm just going to parent these two guys. The orange groups underneath my spine pivot group. And there you have that. So, everything works, everything's great. We're going to talk about cleaning up later. For now, we're just going to, and we didn't need this for now. Normally I would create like some FK controls in between, but I don't want to do that here, so we're just going to skip that for now. Uh, so in the next video, in the part 2 of the spine, we're going to talk about the advanced twist controls. We're going to do the stretchy spine, and we're going to do the squash uh, volume. It's, quite, it's going to be quite a long lecture. Uh... But I think I think we I think we're good by now. We're in the mood right? we're in the mood now, so let's let's um, keep our momentum high and uh, talk about some little bit more advanced topics on the next video.